Hi, and welcome to lesson three in our periodic table and bonding unit. Our first two lessons looked at the periodic table. Now let's look at the bonding part of this unit. We're going to start with the discussion of ionic bonds and what it means to be an ionic bond. Let's begin by getting a formal definition of this notion of a bond. A chemical bond results from the exchange of valence electrons between two atoms. This exchange is going to create a force that's going to hold those atoms together. That's the chemical bond. It's important to understand that chemical bonds can be broken and reformed. In order to break bonds, you have to put energy in. In other words, it absorbs energy. In order to form bonds, you're going to release energy. The saying for this is BARF, B-A-R-F. Breaking absorbs, releases forms. If you can remember BARF, you can always remember this part of this discussion. The two major kinds of bonds that we're going to be dealing with in this class are ionic bonds and covalent bonds. And this discussion deals with ionic bonds. So an ionic bond results from the transfer of valence electrons. The transfer of electrons forms a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion. And because opposite charges attract, that's what makes the ionic bond. We do need to be able to figure out if a particular bond is going to be ionic or not. And that's very much going to depend upon the electronegativity difference between the atoms in the compound. Generally speaking, if the electronegativity difference between the atoms is greater than 1.8, the bond will be ionic. The more electronegative atom will have a strong enough pull on the less electronegative atom's electrons that it will actually result in the transfer of those electrons from the less electronegative atom to the more electronegative atom. Among other things, this basically means that all bonds between metals and nonmetals are going to be ionic, and that no bonds between nonmetals are ever going to be ionic. Let's look at one classic example involving sodium and chlorine. Sodium is a metal. It's got an electronegativity of 0.9. Chlorine is a nonmetal. It has an electronegativity of 3.2. When it's neutral, sodium has one valence electron. And when it's neutral, chlorine has seven valence electrons. When these two elements bond with each other, they're going to form an ionic bond because the electronegativity difference between them is greater than 1.8. Chlorine is more electronegative, so it's going to take sodium's valence electron and use it to complete its valence. As a result, sodium will become a positive ion and chlorine will become a negative chloride ion. If we consider what this looks like in a solid crystal of sodium chloride, we'll get this repeating pattern of positively charged sodium ions, the purple ions in this picture, and negatively charged chloride ions, or the green ions. Of course, this helps to explain why salt naturally occurs in crystal structures as a solid, because the ions just repeat many, 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 many billions of times over and over and over again in three dimensions. When considering how to draw dot diagrams of ionic compounds, we should remember our discussion on how to draw ionic dot diagrams more generally. The cation dot diagram has no valence electrons, square brackets, and its positive charge outside of the brackets. The anion dot diagram will have all of its valence electrons, square brackets, and its negative charge outside of its bracket. We're then going to need to alternate cations and anions until the overall charge is zero. To look at our sodium and chlorine example, once we transfer the electron from sodium to chlorine, we're going to put square brackets around sodium and square brackets around chloride, a positive charge outside of sodium and a negative charge outside of chloride. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and then let's move on. Why don't you try one on your own? This is actually not in your packet. Draw a dot diagram for the ionic compound aluminum oxide, which is Al2O3. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So when aluminum is neutral, it has three valence electrons. And when oxygen is neutral, it has six valence electrons. When they form ions, aluminum is going to lose its three valence electrons and take on a plus three charge. And oxygen is going to gain two valence electrons and take on a negative two charge. But this is not the dot diagram for aluminum oxide because if I add plus three and minus two, I do not get to zero. So in order to get the full dot diagram for this compound, I need to alternate these ions until I have a total that adds up to zero. In order to do that, I'm going to start with one oxide ion, and then one aluminum ion, and then another oxide ion, and then another aluminum ion, and then finally a third oxide ion. If I add up all of these charges, I have plus six and minus six, which gets me to zero. This is the acceptable compound dot diagram for aluminum oxide. Of course, in reality, it looks more like this, where we have our oxide ions in red, and our aluminum ions in gray. And remember that this structure just repeats many, many, many hundreds of billions of times onward and onward, which is of course the characteristic crystal structure of any ionic compound. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have. And then when you're ready, let's wrap up. 
Thanks so much for watching our discussion of ionic bonds. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can explain how an ionic bond forms. Make sure you can determine if a particular bond is going to be ionic based on the electronegativity difference between the atoms in the bond. Make sure you can predict the anion and the cation in simple binary ionic compounds, compounds made out of two different ions put together. And finally, make sure that you can represent ionic compounds as Lewis dot diagrams. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.